What is going on, everyone? It's been a while. I've been a little bit busy. I got a little one on the way. So there's been a lot of planning and preparation going on around the house. And I haven't had a little lot of time to shoot videos lately. But I have been working on pedals. That never stops. Well, almost never stops. But today I'm going to be bringing another video of the dumbbell pedal. So if you've watched my videos before, you've probably seen the dumbbell. So you're wondering, why is he doing another one? Two reasons. One, because I really like the pedal. And uh, it's one of those that has never really left my, bo my board for a very long time. It always just kind of sticks around. Um, I might take it off on the occasion that I need to make space for something else, depending on a set list or something like that. But I never get tired of playing around with it. It's always got something that I can unlock out of it that I haven't tried stacking it with before, or another guitar that I might want to try it with that I've like, hey, I've never tried this with a dumbbell before. Let's see how it goes. If you're not familiar with the dumbbell pedal, what it is is a D-style circuit. So D-style synonymous with the infamous dumbbell amplifier. That's right. So it is a dumbbell emulator. No, it's not a dumbbell emulator. It is a dumbbell style circuit. It's a dumbbell style sound. So it's very bold. It's got lots of mids. It cuts through the mix extremely well. It's just a whole lot of fun to play with. But there has been a new twist and a new development. So I've been a little busy lately. Uh, for those of you out there that don't know, I spent the last 22 years serving in the US Navy and I've retired, finally. Thank God. No, it was a really fun time. I have absolutely no regrets about my time spent in the military, but I'm very, very glad after 22 years to be done with it. So I've got a lot more time to work on pedals in the interim between leaving the Navy and starting a new job. So I got around to something I've been meaning to do for a really long time, which is designing circuit boards. I know there's a lot of purists out there that like, like the uh, hand-built circuits. You like it point-to-point -point wired. You like having all your components on perf board or Vero board if you're unfamiliar perf board. It's just a plain, f flat, blank circuit board with a bunch of little holes in it. And then a Vero board, it's the same style design, but it's got strips across the back to connect all the individual components. Two different styles. There are advantages to one over the other and vice versa. But in the end, a Vero board is a really, really fun and rewarding way to prototype out circuits, to try circuit designs you've never done before without having to order a, a printed circuit board or PCB for short from another manufacturer, or try to put it all out on breadboard, which is those white things you see super, super smart people like Brian Wampler messing around on, where they plug all the components in and there's wires hanging off everywhere and they can switch things around. Yeah, sure, I could probably do that. And I do own a few breadboards, but they're not very high quality. And honestly, I just prefer to build it out on proto board and then toy with the circuit from there. I don't know why. I know it's the least efficient way to do things, but it's how I like to get things done. Now, when it coming coming back around to the point of manufactured circuit boards, vice, hand-built, proto board, or perf board, or even what you might see like point-to-point -point wiring is what some people will call it. Advantages, disadvantages. Proto board, Vero board, they look super cool. They have that very hand-built boutique kind of thing going on where you go, wow, somebody took a lot of time to put this together. That's fault one. They take a lot of time to put together. Fault two is things can go wrong with a Vero board and a proto board. Things that can't as easily go wrong with a printed circuit board. And electrically, the electricity, the signals, nothing knows the difference between a 24 gauge wire and a 0.5 millimeter run in a circuit board until you get to large amperages and you're dealing with something that has more current in it. But when we're talking about pedals, most of your favorite effects that are manufactured by other companies use printed circuit boards, the overwhelming majority. And the ear doesn't know the difference. The electrons don't know the difference. Where the difference lies is that when that pedal hits the ground for the first time, when you're walking into a gig or something like that, or you've got somebody carrying your board for you and they're like, hey man, let me grab your board. We're, we're making our way into this gig right now. Let me grab your stuff out of your, your truck or your trunk or whatever. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that individual has your board in their hands, your unshielded board, because you don't have the money for a Pelican case or you don't have a flight case because you're a local gigging musician. You're like, I'll just toss it in the car. And their toe catches on the way in and they, they grab their toe and they go down like a tree. This is, let's say it's like a six foot six individual. This is a big dude and he's just a nice guy. 
that comes and helps out and he comes down like a tree and the back of your board hits the pavement and that's what breaks his fall. That proto boarded circuit that's all pinned together really delicately and really pretty is not designed to take that kind of impact. So there's a high probability that in the midst of sound check or worse, in the midst of a performance, you're gonna now reach down and click on that foot switch and nothing's gonna happen. You're gonna have that heart dropping moment where the light doesn't come on, the sound doesn't change and you go, oh no, it's not working. Thankfully it's true bypass, you can click it again. Signal's coming through, I'm playing, I'm hearing it. Okay, cool, let's try it again, click, nothing. Now you're in panic mode. You're looking at your board. You're trying to figure out what can replace that. There's a high probability for most of us, you were relying on that sound. And even though the audience doesn't know the difference, you're going to click on something different. You're going to try to make it work. And maybe it does. Maybe it works great. Maybe you find a new combination of pedals that you didn't know could produce that sound or something even better. But all that's going on in your head is, dang, I really wish I had that pedal right now. <laughs> So printed circuit boards, very robust, very willing to take an impact. They're not gonna let you down as much as a hand build or a Vero build or even one of the more fancy, um, I'm sure you all have seen this before where they actually build it on framework and it's like a latticing floating in there. Absolutely beautiful work. I think it's the coolest thing in the world. I've never built one. I don't think I'm that talented, but I know that if that thing hits the ground, it's probably gonna break. And for those of us who keep our pedals at home and we are primarily Madison Square Bedroom players, that's not a big deal. I'd buy one of those things in a heartbeat. But I know that when I take it out to a gig, it's like having a Fabergé egg on my board that I need to treat it with respect for the artist that made it and the fact that it's constructed in a lighter manufacturing method. But with printed circuit boards, it's not going anywhere. It's very robust. It's built to take an impact everything is nice and tightly packed together it's a very clean way to build a circuit but it's not everybody's favorite but i am going to try transition primarily to printed circuit boards and twofold on that they're rigid they're easy to manufacture and i can put them out a lot more quickly and they also third point let's throw it in there they have a really 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 high rate of accuracy. So I make mistakes. I don't know how many times that I've put pedals together, rows of pedals and people have ordered all the same thing at the same time and I'm putting them together and by the time I get to the fifth one, I'm not, I'm an autopilot. And when I go to test them, number five doesn't work. And then maybe number seven doesn't work. And I'm like, crap, what did I miss? What did I forget? That's not gonna happen here. These things are manufactured. All I have to do is put the components in them and then hand wire them point to point myself. And in the end, you're getting the same product. You're getting the same thing, but it's not hand built on the inside. So if it bothers you, I'm sorry. I'm telling you there is no electrical or audible difference between hand building a circuit on proto board or Vero board and building it on PCB. It's a preference. I prefer PCB. I think they look really clean and they look really nice. They're very rigid. They're very reliable. Some things I think that the coolness factor is definitely there to go ahead and proto board it, point to point wire it, make it all by hand. That's super cool. And for a lot of people, that is a premium product. So I'm still going to be willing to do that. It is going to have a little bit of a price hike because it takes as long to build, for instance, the clone of the gas pedals dumbbell, the D-style circuit, point to point takes, mm, let's say six hours from start to finish to totally build the pedal. And that's if I devote the whole six hours to building the pedal from scrap. I mean, no holes drilled, blank enclosure, nothing on the circuit board, not a bit of wiring done. It takes about six hours. One of these I can put together in about 45 minutes. 45 minutes to an hour and a half to do everything, including the etching and the graphics and the whole nine yards. So it's a lot faster. It's a lot easier. It's got a almost zero rate for error. And I know that what I'm giving you is a lot higher quality product. So hopefully this isn't too painful for those that actually do follow and like to buy my stuff. Not all of my products are going to move to PCB. In order to create the PCB, I have to draw it out. 
So in this time between serving in the Navy and starting my new job, I've taught myself to do that, which is something I've been wanting to do for a really long time, is sit down and learn CAD and actually be able to map a circuit board out and create it. So this is my circuit board. This has my logo on it. I created this, I drew it out. That's all my design. It's just not point to point wired anymore. And for each pedal that I make, that I decide to continue making on a regular basis, I'm gonna have to draw out a circuit board. <laughs> so there is a little bit of initial time consuming that goes into it. And I've only had a chance to do about four or five of them so far, but it's a whole lot of fun to do. So. I can easily see myself spending way too much time on the laptop, at least until my, my little one comes, just drawing out the circuits that I really like to manufacture. The Tallwood Drive. If you've been paying attention to my channel at all and you've watched my video long enough and you're still with me, my all original overdrive, the Tallwood Drive, will arrive in about a week. I'll start getting my first run of circuit boards. It's a really fun pedal. I can't wait to put it out there to the general public and hear people's feedback. Let me know. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you love it or hate it. There's so many ways that I've had fun using it, and I don't mean this in any kind of vanity. It has not left my board. And it definitely wasn't the first iteration of circuit that I ever tried. This wasn't an instant win. I've tried a ton of different circuit designs until I finally got to something that I liked. And that's what the end result was, was the Tallwood Drive. And then also, I will have an all-original fuzz coming out soon. Um, I will be remanufacturing the MOSFET drive, the infamous Ibanez MT-10. If you've never checked one of those out before, they're a whole lot of fun. Fantastic circuit. Definitely a blues layer pedal, but it's got higher gain possibilities as well. It stacks extremely well on the back end of another overdrive or another distortion pedal, and the EQ section of it is very, very tweakable. So there's a lot that you can do with the Ibanez MT-10. They're just very difficult to come by. And I'm also thinking, I'll bet you they sound killer at 18 volt headroom, which will require a little bit of tweaking and a little bit of changes to the circuit, which then I can kind of call my own, but I'm always going to recognize the folks that brought it to us in the first place, i.e. gas pedals. The infamous unknown builder that I can't seem to find any information on that kind of went to the wind and disappeared off the face of the planet. On the back of the new Tallwood drives, or I'm sorry, on the back of the new dumbbell pedals, there is an ode to that person, whoever you are out there, if you see this video, thank you. This is a killer circuit. I made very, very, very few tweaks to it to release it in its current form, but I wanted it to represent that builder. And then lastly, beyond that, I have come into a lot of original Maestro FC1 transistors. They are not easy to come by. <laughs> there is a very finite amount of those but I will be putting out some Maestro FC1 pedals. So if you like a good sputtery, crazy satisfaction fuzz, which is exactly what it is, then I'll have those available pretty soon. And I anticipate I'll probably be able to manufacture about 10 to 12 of them at the most before I'm completely out of transistors that test well, that act right, that sound correct, that have the correct leakage. There's a lot of factors that goes into that. But anyway, that is my take on PCBs. I'm going to turn the dumbbell demo into a different video because this one is already very long, but let me know what you think in your feedback in the comments. I don't see an issue with going PCB. I think it's the smart thing to do. It's the professional thing to do. It's a lot more fit and finished, polished product. It looks great in the enclosure. It's a lot more robust. I feel like this offers a better product to the folks out there that are buying my pedals. Well, let me know what you think. If you're like, no, man, you got to stick with the hand builds. Everybody's doing PCBs. Okay, then cool. But yeah, that's where we're at. All right, I will see you all back. Hopefully you check out the dumbbell video. Let me know what you think. I don't think you're going to be able to tell the difference between my personally owned copy, which is the first one that I ever made, point to point wired, and this one right here, which will be available for sale on Reverb. Oh, in about the next hour. All right, y'all. Appreciate you watching.